guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing my review for the latest episode, which was The House of L. And so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode is my favourite episode of the season. Without a doubt, The House of L, episode 16, was most definitely my favourite. So this was the Red Daughter centric episode and we got a whole origin and it was all told through flashbacks. There was some present day stuff as we got to the end of the episode and it all linked in and it tied in perfectly and I just loved it so much and I'm going to be breaking it down, talking about everything that you need to know and that we need to break down. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So at the start of the episode we have Red Daughter and you know we see various montages of her learning to read and write and train and then eventually they show her the outside world and probably one of my favorite scenes of the episode is when she's sort of just looking at the outside world just the camera looks up you see you know the trees the sky and everything she's so happy and you have this kind of Winnie the Pooh like music just very delightful and happy and then it all goes to shit when she starts freaking out because of her you know powers actually manifesting and she's using it for the first time and so then we get the introduction of Lex Luthor as we met last episode he is amazing I love John Cryer's Lex Luthor definitely my favorite Lex Luthor 100% I can say that with confidence I'm not the biggest Lex fan but I'm really impressed by John and so we see Lex arrive in Kaznia, and so recently I've been saying Russia, so sorry about that. I didn't actually specifically take notice of where exactly it was, but Kaznia is a different country, just very near Russia, and used to be part of the Soviet Union. So we get Lex, and he plans everything. So we get Eve meeting him for the first time, that was a big reveal last episode, and so they plan their future tactics that, you know, he knows that Cat Grant needs an assistant, there's an opening, so he works, so she goes there, and then she goes to the LexCorp, and, you know, it all works out for the best for Eve and Lex, so he's planning way ahead. And so she was created by the Haranel, which revealed in this episode, as we saw at the end of last season, we could infer that, but it's 100% confirmed, and so he's actually, and so Lex actually reveals she is an actual split from Supergirl, so she's part of Supergirl, and when a Kryptonian comes into contact with Haranel, well, in this case, she's split in half, so this is one side of her, she doesn't really remember anything, the only thing she remembers is Alex, and so she doesn't know who Alex is, she has no idea, she meets her later in the episode, we'll get to that soon, but she thinks it's Lex, because she calls Lex Alex, because she mistakes it, because, you know, her language isn't that good at the start, and so that's where Lex comes in, Lex teaches her and tells her how to control her powers, he teaches her English, in this really amazing montage scene, she reads through all these books, it's like quick cuts, like Edgar Wright or something, really enjoyed that, and she interprets it, and she sort of understands the world, and she's very happy, and so we get these really sweet scenes with this kid that she's been looking after, that she saves after that scene, uh, quite early on in the episode, and so she's really happy, she's smiling and everything, just like at the dinner table, you know, really happy, and I really like that, I love that she's not just a cold-hearted villain, but she actually came to actually understand Supergirl in this episode when she was learning, and at one point, you know, she considers that, why would I want to go after Supergirl, what's so wrong about America, it seems all good and, and seems all nice, but later on there's bigger reveals and bigger twists that through Lex's manipulation, she, in the end, becomes Red Daughter. We'll talk about that in a sec. And so, the flashbacks. This is all told through flashbacks. Like, Lex teaches Red Daughter about who she is and who she thinks Supergirl is. And there's this one scene, very similar to how Bizarro was created with Maxwell Lord, where he sort of just screens a load of footage and shows her America, shows her life there, and shows her Supergirl, and talks about her as like a nemesis and that she is like a villain and Red Daughter herself is the hero she's going to be doing the good thing so this is just another piece of evidence to show Lex's manipulation and his sort of mastermind control and so Red Daughter wants to go to America part way through this episode and 
Lex calls her and Kara, you know, our Supergirl as sisters, which technically they are. They're just parts of each other, and so very similar to Bizarro, but actually in the body of Melissa, but in the body of Kara, just, you know, a doppelganger, essentially. And so she wants to find out who Kara is. She wants to find out who Supergirl is as a person. So Lex and Red Daughter go eventually undercover to America, and they are undercover. She's got this brown wig. And so Melissa released a photo a while ago when they were shooting this episode about it. Everyone was theorizing, like, is she going to have brown hair? or what, and it turns out it's true, and I just love that look, I think it's very kind of, very, you know, Marley Rose, I guess it reminded me a bit of Glee, because she's a bit more edgy and so on, but it was funny, and Lex had this ridiculous wig on, and so I really appreciated the scenes in America when she was undercover, because as I said, Lex has been teaching her, like, how to use an American accent to blend in and don't speak in Russian to practice in English so she can go undercover, pretend she's Supergirl, things like that. So I really like those scenes. So she is very similar to Bizarro, but in the less demonic way. She's just a doppelganger of Supergirl, essentially. But follows the rough ideas of how she's manipulated to believe certain things. By this case, it's just Lex Luthor, not Maxwell Lord. And so, Red Daughter and Lex actually visit Kara's apartment in this episode, and she blends into who Kara is, and they go undercover, and she's in Kara's essential clothing, like how she dresses, they know it's Kara Danvers. Lex actually knows that Supergirl is Kara, which is very interesting, um, so I'm guessing he has details behind the scene, because essentially he is like a puppet master, controlling everything. But it's at that point that Red Daughter meets Alex for the first time, so that was an oh shit moment because you're like, oh my god, Alex thinks this is her Kara, and we know as a spectator, we know this is Red Daughter, the Russian, or the Kaznian person, who is actually, you know, part of Supergirl, but she's been manipulated to think and sort of talk in this different way, and so she uses her American accent that... Lex Luthor has been teaching her to use in order to go undercover, so it really served her well that she had actually been taught to use an American accent to sound like Kara, because, you know, Lex obviously knows what she sounds like, and Lex has the idea of who Kara is as a person, and so with Red Daughter actually reading up on Kara and, you know, her being in the apartment, we have that really nice montage scene when she's you know, sitting down, she doesn't want to go back to Kaznia, she has the blanket over her, she's just very innocent and very sort of just childish in a way that she's, you know, looking into the life of Kara and she's fascinated, which is very interesting. And so at one point she's looking into the mirror, she has the glasses and she does the hair up in this sort of very childlike way and then she goes to El Corp and she meets Lena Luthor for the first time and... So that was a really amazing scene where she actually reveals when Eve comes into the conversation, so she's fine with Lena, Lena doesn't realise anything is wrong, but Eve obviously knows Red Daughter is her, and she's pretending. So Red Daughter says to Eve, in regards to Kara, she has compassion and friends, and she essentially you know, her ideology isn't what Lex wants, and so they have to manipulate her even further and cause her pain to, you know, get mad at America, essentially, to get even more mad at Supergirl because Supergirl protects these people. So, in the end, Lex calls Eve and Otis, who somehow survived, they haven't explained that yet, but... So, essentially, they have to frame America for blowing up this kid's house and killing this kid, but it's revealed later in the episode Otis actually saved the kid because he didn't want to kill the kid. So there is some humanity in him, although he is, you know, the villain. And also it was revealed why he recruited Ben Lockwood in the first place, because they needed someone in America, a, in quotation marks, a true American to, you know, lead this thing. So, you know, Lex is all behind it. And so... It goes on, and Red Daughter massacres an entire American ship of soldiers, and so this is through Lex's manipulation of her and control to make her seem like, you know, he knows nothing, that he's just here to clean it up, but he's the one that actually caused it in the first place, so that 
she is, you know, the miracle that he created. He wants to fully control her because he's the one that's been molding her in the first place. And so we go to three months ago, Red Daughter feels ill, and we saw that in a past episode, and Lex gives himself cancer, which was a really kind of shocking scene. I did not expect that. He was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to give myself cancer. He gives himself cancer. Then Lena has to test the trials so he can save Red Daughter, so he needs to use a blood transfusion from himself if the test works, so that's why they did it on James. So then Lex gets the powers, he has the Haranel in him, and he is able to save Red Daughter, so it all links up and I really appreciated how they linked it all up, and it all worked. And then we carry on and we see, you know, various montages of how Lex has led up to today, we see him in court and different things like that, and all the lead up, you know, he's in hologram form at Lena's place, and so it all sort of results in, you know, what happened in present day. We return to present day, we see Supergirl actually talk about that Lex has survived, so Supergirl sees Lex for the first time, and he's escaped, so now everyone knows Lex is on the loose. I don't know if he's going to appear next episode or not, but we know he's appearing in the finale, very excited for that, and so he actually returns, obviously, like I said, to save Red Daughter, to use that transfusion after that, and he saves her, so then it is revealed at the end of the episode she will destroy her so in that case she's talking about supergirl she's going to go to america she's going to national city and lex's gift to the world is red daughter as he says and he says my red daughter so finally got the name drop and then you see the reveal of this new red daughter suit with the comic book symbol i absolutely love it it's amazing and then so the final scene of the entire episode which is probably one of my favorite scenes was this amazing ending with red daughter in the sky in national city all suited up in that new suit it's all happening i'm so excited let me know if you are in the comments down below this was my favorite episode by far of this entire season so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys later goodbye